Thanks for sticking with us. You're listening to the Mutual Audio Drama Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Previously on Wormwood, Rachel Nolan and Jacob Kidder discovered that Rachel was now a ghost, her corporeal form having been sacrificed to a demon worshipped by their parents and Wormwood librarian Lynette Bradley as part of their bid to control the mysterious artifact hidden in Wormwood. One month has passed and the residents of Wormwood find themselves picking up the pieces of their lives. But what happened to these two teenagers during that missing month? Discover the fate of Rachel and Jacob as we unravel the missing month on this episode of Wormwood. Chasing the vision of a drowned woman, Dr. Xander Crow has found himself trapped in the mysterious town of Wormwood a prisoner within the old house atop the hill. Now, as secrets are revealed and horror becomes undeniable, sinister new shadows have begun to creep across this strange town, lost forever at the crossroads of darkness and fate. Welcome to Wormwood. Episode 3, The Missing Month, Part 1. Written by Jeremiah Allen and Rick Beta Jr. Jacob! Rachel! Get out of here! Jacob! Oh God, are you all right? What? <sighs> Whatever that was got me pretty good, Rach. There's a lot of blood. Did it hurt you? Was it able to... I mean, did it attack you, Rachel? I know you got masked down here in the basement. What are you saying, Jake? <laughs> you think I'm a fat ghost? No, I... Um... So, you're okay? I'm okay. Good, okay, that's good. I don't think I can walk. This really hurts. What was that thing? I don't believe it. (sighs) Dirty, black skin, those gigantic hands. Did you see it, Jake? Yeah. It kind of makes you believe in hell. And I thought my bones were the scariest thing in the library. They are. You are. Uh, The monster's gone, and we gotta get out of here. There's no telling when the book club or that thing will be back. Uh, Come on. Help me up. Ah! Damn it! Sorry, sorry. No, it's not your fault, Rach. You gotta get me over to that window. I gotta get out of here. No, no, wait, wait. The gun. Deidre's gun. It fell out of your belt loop when the thing attacked you. You have to get it. Relax. I picked it up and... Oh, God, Jake. You're carrying a gun now? It's not just a gun. I told you, it's Deidre's gun. It's got history. Tell me later, okay? Yeah, well, I'll let Deidre tell you. You'll never believe me anyway. Aw, you're so cute when you pout. Whatever, Jake, no big. Let's just get out of here. Yeah. Ah. So, just to reiterate, both Dahlia and Peggy skipped out of town in the middle of the night and didn't leave a hint as to why. Nobody says more or less. The last thing I need is an absentee husband, suddenly concerned with my business. Our business. Do you understand? Yes. Why, yes. Couldn't, in fact, be more probable in its shocking improbability. Jonathan. Jonathan Kidder. I need you to focus on what's most important. Now, are you clear? Clear. For all it's worth, Jonathan... She was a great factor to our cause, one who will always be remembered. Are we this cold-blooded? Is this what we've become? Not a moment of silence? I mean, come on. 
We can show the woman some respect. Myself included. You're right, Jonathan. No blood is spilled in vain. No sacrifice made unnoticed. Let us pause for a moment of silence. To Dahlia. To Dahlia. Lovely. Very well, then. I suppose I need to tend to our other tragedy, Mrs. Nolan, as I'm sure she's quite the starving one by now. Be sure to give her my best wishes. It's because of her we are in this mess. Oh, I will. You don't worry, Lynette. No, no. Don't worry. Jonathan, you really should go. Go home. There's no use in sitting here watching your wife burn to ashes. Quite cathartic, I hear. She's now devoid of the pains of this book club and our high and mighty sense of self-importance. You don't mean that. I know you better than you know your own beliefs right now. You don't know. You don't know everything. Speak up, Jonathan. I didn't hear you. Nothing. You go along. I want to make sure this fire ends peacefully. I want final words with my wife. What are you going to do if Tom shows up? I can throw a good lie at him. Seems to be commonplace around these parts. Okay, Jonathan. I understand that you're not thinking straight. Just try to. For Dahlia. Yes, for Dahlia. I'll leave you alone with her now. One day, Dahlia, this will all be behind us. But I need you now more than ever. Watch over me. Please, make sure I don't do anything stupid. Jeez. Dahlia, why did we do it? What did we get involved in that's important enough to subject us to so much loss. It's getting the best of me. Or worst. What kind of father signs off his own son? There are so many other towns in this damn planet, and we had to end up here. should go. I could run away and start all over. New wife. New kids. New job. JK's pineapple stand. Live by the beach. Yeah. That sounds good. Who's there? Why, hello, boy. Jonesy. What are you doing here? I saw the fire from the road, so I figured I could get the feeling back in my fingers. I seldom trade the streets of town for the outskirts of cold land, but for the warmth tonight, I see my venture was a good one. How long have you been listening? Long enough to concur with most of what you said. Problems with the missus? You should leave and start over. That's what got me here. Look at me now. Right. Did you see anyone else? Only you. Oh, is that a human body on the pyre? Deidre? Deidre, where are you? Deidre! Oh, I... <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of giving a girl some privacy? I'm sorry, Deidre. I didn't... Oh, don't you worry about it. I was done anyhow. I'm guessing by the urgent look on your face that you and Jacob found something interesting in the library yesterday. Oh, Deidre, it was horrible. Something in the basement attacked us. This oily, black-skinned monster. 
It almost killed Jake, and we only got away because I shot it with the gun you gave us. That thing actually did some good, huh? Well, what do you know? A little piece of the world is at peace now. I don't get it, Deidre. That's no ordinary gun, Rachel. Sometimes objects can carry the psychic residue of tragic events. The more powerful the emotion, the greater the effect. Now, we call these objects cursed, and that's as good a description as any. I guess that sounds about as believable as anything else these days. Well, that gun is tied to a particularly powerful moment. What do you mean? That there is a Walther PPK 7.65 millimeter handgun. The last time it was fired was in 1945. Its owner was hiding in a bunker as the Red Army tore through his city. So he poisoned his dog, shot his new wife, and then shot himself while biting into a cyanide capsule. That last shot was the final psychic nail in the coffin of the Second World War. You mean this is... Hitler's gun, Rachel. The most cursed pistol in history. I told Jacob that he wouldn't use it if I told him where it came from. And I wouldn't blame him. Wait a minute. Did you say you actually shot the monster? We found my bones You felt heavy. The closer you got, the more more solid you got. How'd you know? I told you, honey. I may not be the expert Dr. Crow is, but I know a thing or two about what you're going through. Do you have your bones with you? No. That's what I'm here about. Whatever that thing was cut Jake's back to ribbons, and we had to get out of there before it or the book club came back. I think it's infected. But that's not possible. He only got hurt a few hours ago, but he's already got a fever. The world you're dealing with, Rachel, there's no such thing as not possible. Did you get him somewhere safe? To Cedric Bloomington's farm, maybe? I couldn't. Outside of the library basement? I can't hold him. He was too hurt to walk on his own. I I stayed solid for a little while after leaving the library, but it wasn't far. I got him up in a treehouse in the barrister's backyard, out of sight of the road, but... We need your help, Deidre. Jacob's back looks terrible, and there's nothing I can do for him. I can't even bring him medicine. I can't guarantee he'll be safe for very long, either. The barrister's house isn't far from the library, and Miss Bradley surely knows we broke in by now. So they've got to be looking for the two of us. Use the men's room. Rachel, I'm not sure there's much I can do to help. No. Deidre, all you got to do is bring him some medicine, some antibiotics, or something. You have to help us. We have no one else to turn to. Listen to me, Rachel. There's someone following me. Someone who doesn't want me to know I'm being followed. I noticed it last night. Shadows that shouldn't be there. Things that felt out of place. I tried the cards, but they were jumbled and incoherent. I've never seen anything like it before. Whoever's after me knows how to hide, and I can't risk leading them to Jacob. If you two are what they're really after, especially not now, not if he's hurt. So that's it? You're just not going to help at all? Ask Cedric, Rachel. Go to Dr. Crow. They're both infinitely safer than me right now. I already went to Cedric's. Just because I couldn't carry Jacob all the way out there doesn't mean I didn't go for help. He's got his hands full keeping Dexter safe, and there is no way Crow would help. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. You're the only one. I'm sorry, Rachel. But as bad as Jacob's problems might be right now, I'm not going to make him worse by leading his enemies to it. He'll die! No, he won't. That's not his destiny. Hello, Peggy. How is my injured lamb? This old garage reeks of oil, I know. You must be uncomfortable here in the cold and the dark, chained like an animal. Oh, and you must be ravished, no? (coughs) Peggy, you've really done a number on our little book club. On one hand, it is understandable to be distraught. 
but that does leave the other hand free to smack a well-meaning reminder of the seriousness of our actions. Now, how about a snack? Yes! Right on is your answer. Good. I have three whole Nilla wafers for you. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Only three? <laughs> oh, my. Don't do that. Why can't I be in the library? Peggy, you know the library is not a safe place anymore, especially with the beast running loose. The chains have been broken. The demon will never go back there. It's free. I'm talking about Jacob. He is no longer to be trusted, and we're not sure yet of what he is capable of doing. <laughs> he went up the book club, didn't he? <laughs> Don't you feel a little silly that a 16-year-old boy can cause so much chaos among us? <laughs> we're growing weaker by the minute. <laughs> It's our bloodlust and the power that goes along with it that matters to us. We'll tell ourselves it's for the greater good so we can sleep at night. But it's not true. And I have a feeling you won't have Jonathan Kidder around too much longer either. He's felt what we really are. Killing Dahlia was the best thing I've ever done for him. Jonathan is grieving. He'll be fine. Just like me. He's a flight risk, Bob. Thanks to you, of course. Up yours! Peggy, look at you. Testy. However, your concern is a valid one. I will talk to Lynette, and we just might have to take care of his situation before it gets worse. We can't have the weak among us. A replacement might be in order. But you should be more worried about the hand that feeds you. And comments like, up yours, don't help your cause too much. Do you want me to starve you to death? No one will ever know. <laughs> That's fine with me. You have a little boy who doesn't want you to starve to death. Remember that. Now, those are bean and cheese taquitos. I even gave you mild salsa. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Before you go... Can you do me a favor huh? and make sure my ear isn't still bleeding? Oh, okay. Uh, J just come back and check. Right behind my ear. I don't see anything. I it hurts where you hit me earlier. I did not mean to hurt you. Only to get the pistol from your hand before you hurt another... <sighs> this club has become a disgrace. You will never get the demon back, and Jacob Kidder is going to seek revenge on everyone. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Let's see if you can eat in the dark. I should go now. No! God! Jake? You awake? Mm. Get in there. Well, get there quicker, okay? We gotta find you a safer place to stay. Deidre isn't going to be of any help, and I can't find Cedric. So we're just going to have to find Dr. Crow. Uh, everything's fine, Rach. I talked to Harmony this morning. She's been in and out with some salve and medicine for the pain, and she promised not to say anything to anyone so long as I promise to tell her what's going on. H Harmony? Yeah, Harmony Barrister. Y you know, the, the girl whose parents own this treehouse. Ah, uh, yeah, and she knows enough about medicine to fix your back. Well, she's got the internet, doesn't she? You know, I'm actually starting to feel a bit better already. Well, what the hell have I been running around all day for then, huh? Wow, Rach, stressed much? I mean, I guess I was being pretty loud earlier, tossing and turning in my sleep, and she heard me from the house. Better harmony than her parents, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Jake. It's just been a crazy 24 hours, and I've been racing around everywhere trying to get someone to help you. I and... didn't know you got tired. I don't. At least not physically. I don't have a body. 
I guess I'm just sort of upset about the library. Oh, don't sweat it, all right? What happened back there, yeah, it was weird, but weird is almost normal for us nowadays, right? And when I get better, we'll find some way to get back down in the basement and get your, you know, get your bones. They're not there anymore, Jake. What? I went back just after Deidre said she couldn't do anything. I figured I might be able to move myself, my bones, and be able to help you with my own two hands, but... <sighs> Someone must have taken them. They're gone. I don't feel pain or get solid anywhere near the library anymore. It's just like any other place now. Rage. Kidder? You're so messed up, you're talking to yourself now. Oh. Uh, hey, Harmony, what's that? It's chicken noodle soup. Here. It's in a handy-dandy thermos, you know? Welcome to space age and all that. <laughs> um, you hear what happened to your mom? My mom? No, is everything cool? Y you seriously don't know? Is she okay? Oh, man. Uh, everyone's saying that your mom and Peggy Nolan took off in the middle of the night. Just disappeared. I guess your dad called Sheriff Bradley this morning and showed him some kind of goodbye note or something we left. The whole town's buzzing about it. No way. You can't be serious. Serious as a heart attack. There's no way they just disappeared, Jake. The book club. The book what? Don't tell her, Jake. She doesn't need to know. She does need to know. We can't do this by ourselves anymore. Not if even more people are going missing. Jacob, who are you talking to? Harmony, do you believe in ghosts? I should have thrown that goddamn fight. I should have walked away without pride. Money in my pocket. Through the ropes, onto the city streets to find a girl that I could keep. I should have stayed in Los Angeles. Should have played that part, died another low life on the street. <laughs> could have been an actor. <laughs> should have learned grace how to be over the hill. It should have been anything but a hopeless brawler. The wrong damn fight was always in you, never in the ring. When don't you lose in the end? It should have dropped. That's how it should have gone down. Accepted. But you had to be the Renaissance man. You, you had to take the risk. <laughs> you had to run to a town called Wormwood. Burn down this bed and breakfast. Bury Hank Mason in the ashes. Who are you fooling? Johnny Valentine should have been running a fuel pump. You hear that? What are you waiting for? Do it! You got nothing to fight for. Hank, Johnny, whoever you are. You're a one-armed boxer. You've never made it. You've lost everything you've ever loved. You're a murderer. The old man was dead wrong about me. The sacrifice is not worth it in the end. Oh. And this, this is the end. Hello, ceiling fan. Round and round you go. <laughs> this is the end. Who's there? Hank Mason, you shouldn't keep your door unlocked this time of night. Bad business tends to expose itself after midnight. Lynette. How are you feeling? Hmm. Looks like you have one thing under control. I'd say you have at least the rate of a night's room's worth of recycled bottles at your feet. You know what? <laughs> I lost an arm. <laughs> You've lost much more than an arm. 
you've lost control of your life, and it shows a side of you I can appreciate. So, tussle with the sheriff. <laughs> Need a room for the night, do you? Hank, are you open to new things? Lynette, don't you come in here trying to sell me Amway or whatever the hell they call themselves these days. I bought the kit, didn't like it, and that was it. No, no. I'm not trying to sell you anything. You see, Mr. Mason, what I want to talk about doesn't need a pitch. Now, point me in the direction of your kitchen. I'll make us a pot of coffee, and then we can talk about the demon I want you to catch. Already went around with the muddy man. Got my ass handed to me in the open hand and my severed arm. The muddy man, oh dear. <laughs> How cute. You're not a child, and I have no reason to tell you a scary bedtime story. My demon is a worthy opponent for your skills. How's that song go? I guess it has to be catchy, you know? <laughs> Muddy man is watching you. He'll drip from his bones till he finds you alone. Then the mighty man will snip you. The coffee pot? This way? Just leave me alone. I've had enough talk of evil. You lose everything. I've lost everything believing in it. Now, who says we're talking about evil, Mr. Mason? You really are one of Phineas Tibbert's disciples, aren't you? No. I'm nobody. Phineas Tibbert was wrong to assume that evil needs to be contained. It's already out. The important thing is deciding how to handle it. Wormwood Crossroads is produced and distributed by Habit Forming Films, LLC, and features the cast of Season 2 characters. Arthur Russell as Dr. Xander Crow, Sonia Perozzi as Sparrow and Rachel Nolan, Scott Olenek as Jacob Kidder, Rob Grindlinger as Sheriff Bradley and Cedric Bloomington, Coralie Nickars as Deidre Frost, Joe J. Thomas as Hank Mason and your announcer, Dave Johnston as Wayne Drexel and Jonathan Kidder. Anna Maganini as Lynette Bradley and Peggy Nolan. Cheyenne Besides as Lamora Haskell and Sister George. Zachary Folks as Brent Saunders. Andrew Ramirez as Dexter Nolan. Peter Dirksen as Jonesy and Jimmy Details. And introducing Nicole Rayburn as Harmony Barrister. Additional voices provided by the talented cast. Original music compositions by Todd Hodges. The Wormwood writing staff includes David Acampo, Jeremy Rogers, Jeremiah Allen, Rob Allspaugh, Tiffany K. Whitney, and Rick Beta Jr. Wormwood created by David Acampo and Jeremy Rogers. Copyright 2008 Habit Forming Films, LLC. Wormwood is a serialized podcast drama and cannot be distributed in part or whole outside of the podcast format without written consent from the creators. For more information on the cast, creators, and individual episode credits, please visit www.wormwoodshow.com. Thank you for listening, and welcome to town. from your fatty comment? Oh, uh, hey there. <laughs> what are you saying, Jake? You think I'm a fat ghost? No, I... Uh, could lose a few. That I, was just cruel. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're back to me up. Oh, my God. That was...
That was just purely because Okay, we are you just, getting me back because I said you sounded just, gay? That was just because we'd been talking about bloopers. That wasn't even for anything. Okay. Bad. That was <laughs> he's trying to get on the blooper reel. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was lame. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, where do you want okay, to go from? I'm seriously so into the drama right now. Yeah, that okay. was so forced. <laughs> where do you want to go from? From the top of that page. Cool. <laughs> okay. Hi there. Do you like science fiction and fantasy? Well, you're in luck. Wednesday Wonders is the mutual audio feed that has all things to do with the world of the unknown. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed every day for amazing audio, or you can find the Wednesday Wonders for all of your sci-fi and fantasy needs in your favorite podcast player. The Mutual Audio Network, where we listen and imagine together.